Captain Barleycorn must die. And in case you're wondering what that title was about, John Barleycorn was a nickname for barley because barley was used extensively Oh, right until the 1890s, 1900s, to make beer, to, as ale actually, to make ale, to make bread. It was a staple food until the potato came into being, so it's incredibly important. And there's a song called John Barleycorn Must Die, which is about the barley harvest. And I'm referring to that really, because used, doing what we did in video 1839, I actually made this. And for my eye, it looks incredibly like a, a bit of wheat or a bit of barley. So I'm calling it my barley corn generator. Now, if you look to 1839, you'll remember we had a couple of principles. One was that this, this was just free to swing, so the wind would blow it and we would get it to flap and we would get that flapping generation that's available from low-grade wind that just isn't used. Now, I also put it onto this, which is a bit of fiberglass rod at 3mm, and the reason I put it onto this is because it's a spring. So it takes absolutely nothing to get this going, and because it's now on a spring, it will continue to bounce backwards and forwards and therefore continue to generate. And of course, as the wind blows it hard, then it just springs back again. So I thought it was an awesome design because it's the barleycorn design that has a couple of wires running down to a couple of copper strips around here spaced apart and you just stick it in the current collector. So your current collector is a mat. And all of those join up in series, meaning that we get a, an area that's covered in these things and the wind will buffet it around like that, causing them to generate. And of course, if one breaks or goes out, all the rest are available. Now, the idea here is to make lots and lots of these. And of course, that means they have to be stupidly cheap and stupidly easy to make. So this cost me about 15 pence to make, something like that, and it still has to be lower. Now, I made it on the 3D printer with things that I could buy some. Imagining we could get this down to, I don't know, three to five pence, something like that, which would be ridiculous. But anyway, have a look at the basic design. This is the Tinkercad drawing. There's the flap, if we have a look at that. The neodymium magnets go in that hole there, and here I've actually got a hinge. Now, I'm thinking about reinstating the integral hinge that we used in the previous video because I've left holes here for bearings and having made it and tried it, I think it's completely unnecessary. And of course, we could cut the cost of the bearings and the rod that go through there by making an integral bearing. And at the moment, of course, these two bits are separate, so we have to put the bearings in and then put that in. With the integral bearing, of course, the whole thing just prints and is ready to go. So again, we're adding costs. So I'm going to probably put the integral bearings back in. Here, what we've got is a couple of shapes where the coils get wound around. So the coils are wound around there and there. And then, of course, the flap goes in the centre with the magnets forming an arc between those two coils, which is how it generates. Here, we've got the hole where the rod goes in. So that's just a hole for the rod. And there's our barley corn head all done. And of course, that is meant to be on a springy rod that then waves about in the wind. And of course, the spring acts as an energy store, which is why it's just so super easy. And then this is a pendulum. So that gives you an idea of how it's going to work. In here, we have some uh, neodymium magnets. And obviously, those magnets just go between those two coils. And I've connected up an LED right there. And if we let that, uh, that go, you can see the LED lights. And if I get my hand in the right place. There we go. We're right. And it takes next to no effort to make that swing backwards and forwards. Now it's generating somewhere in the region of three, three and a half volts, about four or five milliamps in this version. And again, that may not sound like a lot, but remember, the idea here is to make these for five pence and fill a field with them. Then you're starting to make some kind of difference, because at the moment we're getting about, oh, 10 milliwatts out of it, something like that. And at five pence for 10 milliwatts, we're talking about about five pounds a watt, something like that, or if you like, 5,000 pounds a kilowatt. So wind turbines themselves, of course, are, are, well, they're vastly variable and nobody tells you the truth. So I had a look at the American Clean Power Association and they reckon that a wind turbine of one kilowatt is going to be in the region of uh, 3,000 to 5,000 with an installation cost 
being somewhere around about 15,000 to 75,000, which means that is actually in the ballpark of the wind turbine for cost of power generation, which is crackers. Now this low wind that we're using from the flutter, that's absolutely everywhere. There's lots of it around, far more than there is in hurricane winds. And of course in a hurricane, this is going to do what a blade of grass does. It's just going to bow. <laughs> if the hurricane is so fierce it breaks something like that, then you really need to be worrying more about your house structure than you do about a wind turbine. But, silly though it may seem, something simple like that is looking very promising indeed. OK, let's go look at it outside. That was awesome, and, and I think this is quite possibly one of the best things I've ever come up with. I mean, it's cheap, it's cost-effective, it's robust, it's in, it generates as much as a normal wind turbine for its size, and if I hold that, I can feel how little effort it gets it to actually generate, and so, although I haven't measured it, and some hard numbers would be cool, I'm willing to bet the efficiency of this is off the charts, and it wouldn't be being such a simple device. Now I've used fiberglass here, which is this spring, and of course that's the key to it, but I think fiberglass was just a choice because I had it there, and it's without a doubt that wood would be better, wouldn't it? And there's a tongue twister for you, but that is, um, to my mind, really very cool and very good. And if we use that like a field of wheat, it would protect itself. That's amazing. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it inspired you as well. This is free to anybody who wants to use it because of course this is public domain and I'm hoping that somebody will run with this. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.